episode number three. What else is Julia unhappy with? Well, I'm gonna surprise you this time. Last year, I filmed three videos talking about the vertices of the trade-off triangle. Study, sleep, socialize. But we are all nerds, so the internet. And to kind of mirror those, I already had two episodes on where you would live and sleep and how you would study and how important the choice of colleges is. So now we are off to like extracurriculum stuff. On the second day of my Cambridge degree, we had the talk explaining to us how hard Cambridge workload is gonna be, what a massive jump it will feel like compared to A-levels. And they comforted us by saying that with good enough time management, there shouldn't be any stress. And here is how. The maths. There are 24 hours in a day, eight you sleep, eight you study, and eight you do whatever you want. Now, this has never worked for me. First of all, eight hours of sleep is too little for me. I literally sleep nine or 10 hours, and sometimes I even nap during the day. So that was already kind of like, that's not gonna work. And eight hours for studying, for me, that's unreasonably long. I know that I can be just as productive in a shorter period of time. So if somebody actually manages that, amazing, not me. And of course the eight hours for your fun includes eating, showering, getting to lectures, having absolutely unnecessary conversations, laundry, grocery shopping, i.e. not fun, to be honest, this myth depends on what you believe. Coming from A-levels where everything was absolutely easy, I didn't expect the university to be that hard. Hard not in the sense of sitting in a library all the time and really doing a lot of work, but rather I never expected to lack the necessary skills to perform well. I knew the workload would increase, but I thought so would my skills, like they would just scale with the volume and I would be still performing well. And one of those skills is time management. You cannot imagine how important it is. You will be on your own for the first time, no hand-holding. In fact, in terms of this, university is a very stupid time because at school you have your schedule, you know where you're going and everyone is kind of doing the same thing. And at work, you'll also be like doing nine to five or whatever. Your day will be pretty structured and there won't be a lot of opportunities to completely waste time. University is this middle ground where it's absolutely horrible because everyone is having absolutely different schedules You cannot adjust to someone else's schedule and you don't have to you have a lot of gaps in between to Structure your time to actually put in a lot of work Nobody's pushing you nobody's encouraging you and it can feel absolutely devastating so when you're lacking motivation to live and be a functional member of society, you're supposed to somehow organize your day, which in the grand scheme of things feels like an impossible task now, which is why you should really nurture this skill when you're still at school. Don't let your parents or your teachers do things for you because you are actually not doing yourself a favor at all. You are preventing them from letting you learn things on your own and learn more about yourself. Learn to make good timetables prioritize, rationalize, all of those. Because let me tell you, once you're at uni, there will be people who will be so far ahead of you that they won't even need it. You will start on different levels and they will finish the exercise sheet in a day and then go have fun, whereas you'll spend five days on it and it will feel very unfair because you're coming from the same backgrounds and all that, but... Uh, and then there will be those with horrible time management, those people who will cram right before the exams and somehow get a better grade, which will feel absolutely demotivating. And yes, there are so many of such people, you just have to live with that. You need to work on your own flaws and work attitude. So the thing that happened to me is that I came to the university, was greeted by actually low workload, but because of the lack of those skills that I mentioned, I was unable to cope with it. I felt very overwhelmed. Bad learning techniques, family problems, homesickness definitely did not help any of that. However, you might be the exact opposite of it. You might have been told that you'll have to work super hard, be in the library 24 seven and never see the daylight. And you might be very scared of that. And what I'm telling you is that no, it is actually manageable. Do not externalize the blame. Although the university has a lot of problems, rather work on yourself and how you deal with academic failures. 
because you have loads of those here. The ongoing theme for memes by other universities or kind of comments made about Oxbridge being so nerdy and the environment being too academic and how there is no way you can party and study is actually a lie. First of all, yes, Oxbridge is highly academic and there, there will be rivalry because sometimes your grade literally depends on your rank. Secondly, there are a lot of mental health issues among students and it's not just Cambridge. But lastly, there is a very high chance you will survive the workload and not drop out or intermit. Moreover, you will have a lot of time to relax, join societies and clubs, meet new people and so on. Controversial opinion, but I'm gonna say this, it's mostly people's own decision to opt out of socializing because of all the pressure they're feeling on the side. Sometimes I would feel like I was on the bad end of productivity spectrum. I would spend five times the amount of time as someone else doing the same amount of work. And then I would discover that there are people who are spending five times the amount of time than me. Which means we are on this weird scale of absolutely different amounts of effort and time we are putting in into the same amount of work. And then we're coming out with completely randomized grades. It's not as if the person who spends the most amount of time gets the best grades, if you know what I mean. What I noticed is that tackling the inefficient learning um, is what will shorten the amount of hours that you work and might actually lead to a happier you because you will be able to do things on the side feeling like university workload is not the only thing that's dominating your life. University is definitely a time to explore a lot of things, but I would say start early, like during A-levels, look at what kind of techniques work for you so that you don't have to come to university and copy everyone else, thinking that sitting in a library, underlining things, highlighting things, making hundreds of sticky notes will magically put you on top of the leaderboard. Honestly, do not follow the crowd in that respect. Definitely try out a range of things just so that you can make sure that those things didn't work for you and you're definitely a visual person who needs a lot of PowerPoints and not simply rewriting the same notes over and over again. Yes, although I'm not that kind of person. I've never been to a single club in my life and definitely not in the past four years in Cambridge. But you can definitely put tons of makeup and glitter on yourself and jump in the dark to the world's most horrible music. The funny bit is the most illogical schedule in Cambridge because our weeks go from Thursday to Wednesday. Yeah. So the end of the week is Wednesday, whereas the end of the normal week is of course Sunday. So what people do is the nights out happen on Wednesday and Sunday evenings making absolutely zero sense given that the next day a lot of people have 9 a.m. Why not party on Friday and Saturday night? Cambridge students, huh? Not very smart. Well, after exams is this magical time when everyone is truly free and especially not feeling guilty for not being somewhere else and doing more work. There are these overnight parties that are called Mabel's or June events and I have a couple of videos on those too. Moral of the episode, it is definitely not 100% study, 0% party. There's definitely a huge problem with the drinking culture and pressuring people to go out. And it's funny, but Cambridge students actually are still human, so people start neglecting their work. The fact that we only have graded exams in June means that there is so much time to waste throughout the year and feel so much regret at the end of it thinking why on earth did I not start earlier? The key is to know the ratio for yourself. Some people actually come to university without the desire to spend even 50% of their time on studying. University is not just for studying otherwise I'd say that I'm pretty annoyed paying 4k per year for the academic side of things. I feel like it's so much more and the experience that you're getting is more of the circle of people you meet, like analyzing things, learning critical thinking, learning what works best for you, talking to amazing academics if you manage to find 
them here. And the crazy stories we are told, like maybe you found some tech startup with the person you sit next to in lectures, maybe you'll write a scientific paper, binge watch three TV shows in one weekend, find a soulmate and still get a first, hey. Just remember that do not let stereotypes and peer pressure define your values and priorities when it comes to university. There will be a lot of rivalry, rivalry? Uh, English is not my first language, did you notice? There are a lot of mental health... New... The fact that we have... The, yes, and... Meaning... Wow, it's raining, it's horrible. Why on earth did I choose to study in the UK? I should have been in Australia, swimming in the sea, sunbathing, and playing with kangaroos.